Driving.ca, we do spend a lot of time reviewing luxury cars and sports cars and pickup trucks. But today, we've got a back to basic comparison with two compact sedans at a nice affordable price point. Pretty much, yeah. We have first off the 2024 Honda Civic and we have the 2024 Hyundai Elantra. Now, one thing to note, and we will bring this up several times during our review, is that they're not quite head to head. Our Civic is the top of the line with the, uh, with the more powerful engine that is available in it. Our Hyundai is, it's not the absolute base model, but it is the base engine. You can go higher. It's about, about midway in the, in the trims. So we're going to have to keep that into account when we are making our comparison but there's still enough that we can do a head-to-head -head and show people what it's all about. All right, let's get in the cars and drive them, and we'll talk to you about which one presents the best value, practicality, as well as features and driving performance for their price point. Sounds like a plan. Let's start with the Hyundai Elantra. As mentioned, it's a refreshing change to be in something of an economy car when so many cars are getting so expensive. And granted, Canadians are buying more expensive cars every year, but the Elantra lineup is one of the most affordable, value-packed uh, car lineups on the market. Uh, it starts at 22,000 for the base model, and it goes up to 31,000 for the N line, which has the higher level engine. The model we're testing here is the preferred with tech package which lands right in the middle at 26,000 uh, but it's still the base engine so it's nothing it's nothing fancy uh, but it sure is a pretty nice vehicle for that price it is it's a, a two liter four cylinder engine and it makes 147 horsepower 132 foot-pounds of torque and with an automatic continuously variable transmission or CVT which both of them have Another thing to note is that you can get the Elantra in a hybrid and you're going to be able to get the Civic in one for 2025, but at the moment we're testing 2024, so we're not going to talk about that one yet. Yeah, this one, what I like about it is its simplicity. It's smooth driving, it's easy to operate, there's nothing complex about it, just get in and go and actually enjoy the drive. I find it a very relaxing vehicle. Now, granted, we have the upper engine in the Civic, and I find that a sportier model. This one, you're more laid back, relaxed. This is, you know, commuter, it, it's a commuter car. And it does a very good job as a commuter car. And sometimes we tend to forget that is, there's nothing wrong with a car that isn't fancy, it's not a really, really sharp handling sports car. It just does what it's supposed to do. Now, as we mentioned, 147 horsepower. How does it feel? You know what? If you hadn't told me 147 horsepower, I probably would have thought it had more. I've got to say, in this application, the CVT does a great job of getting the power down smoothly. It does get a bit noisy, the engine and a bit of the CVT whine, but at the same time, it gets going off the line and moving, and I like it for driving until I got into the Civic, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> and of course, we talk about fuel economy. Um, that's a big deal. In our actual driving, this one is showing 6.9 liters per 100 kilometers, and I recall the Civic was showing 6.8, so pretty much a dead heat in terms of the efficiency for these two powertrains. Absolutely, and of course, they both take regular grade gasoline, and both are front wheel drive. Yep, they're nice, economical cars. You know, when, when you're talking about a car that starts at 22,000 in, in the base trim and it's got this kind of performance, what's wrong with that? And then also you mentioned the N line, which is the performance model or, or as close to a performance model as you're going to get. 1.6 liter turbo engine, 201 horsepower, 195 foot pounds of torque, which is more than the Civic that we'll be driving. And it comes in at 31, and our Civic is 34.5. So really, when you're looking at that, the price, you can't argue with it. 
One of the things that doesn't seem as nice in this Elantra compared to the Civic is really interior quality. Uh, and it's hard to say if the upper trim would really match the Civic, but there's a lot of hard plastics in here uh, and it just doesn't quite seem as nice a cabin, both in terms of design and quality. That being said, I really like the technology features. I think the infotainment system is really great. The phone integration works really well, as well as the infotainment system and the gauges are bright and clear and easy to read. So I find the technology experience is quite good, although a little bit more basic, obviously, because these are different trims we're talking about. Yeah, the Civic has a nicer interior, but it's also, as tested here, $8,500 more. So. Yeah, the, the Elantra doesn't have that nice of an interior compared to the Civic, but $8,500, that's a lot of money. Yeah, I really like the simplicity of it and just little things like when you put the, uh, the climate control on automatic, you can actually set the fan speed. So if you want it lower and it's not as noisy, you can, you, you can turn it up. And I also like that you do that just by pushing the button. You don't have to go into the center screen and change everything. It's very simple. Yeah, that's one of the things about most Hyundais is they've got the nice balance between the number of buttons and what functions are on screen, making it really easy to access the most commonly used features. Uh, Hyundai and Kia have that down to a science. So that's something that really stands out no matter which trim you're in in these two cars. Exactly. And the, even when you're going into the screen, the icons are easy to figure out. Uh, everything is, is intuitive. And I like simplicity because that reduces distraction. So we love the simplicity of these vehicles. Let's talk about their practicality a bit. Uh, and before we take a break to stop and check out their practicality, I just want to say, Although this is a basic manually adjustable seat, it's very comfortable. Uh, it's easy and quick to adjust, which I like, which is better when switching between different driver sizes uh, rather than the power seat that you really takes a long time to adjust. So if you've got different drivers in the car, these manual adjustable seats are actually a little bit more practical. Really? I don't think so because I'm short and I got to do the ka -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum to go up. I like the power seat better. Oh, really? Yeah. For me, I find it takes forever. After Hannah has driven the car, I've got to wait like 30 seconds as I lower the seat and move the seat back before I can actually even get into the car. So I feel like it's a giant waste of time. Whereas oh. the manual seats, very easy. Grab the latch, slide it back, and then I can get in and, and pump it to lower it. So. And yet my husband likes it because he can reach in and move the power seat back and forth, and he prefers that. That said, for getting a power seat in either of these vehicles, you have to get the top touring trim in the Civic, which is what we have. In the Hyundai, you have to get the end line. You have to go all the way to the top and the, uh, the more powerful engine. So if you don't like a, a manual seat, then you've got to go all the way to the top. All right, let's go check out the, pra the trunks and talk about the practicality for a second. Let's do that. All right, we're gonna take a little break from driving to talk about these cars' practicality. When you look over the spec sheets and we sit inside them, they're virtually identical in terms of passenger space and the front seat and the rear seat, headroom, legroom, and things like that. And even the trunks both measure just over 400 liters. So there's really not a lot to pick them apart in terms of practicality. Exactly, there are a couple of little things that they're not major, but they're there. For one thing, the Civic has what we call a lower lift over. How far you have to lift over this to get your stuff in the trunk. If it's a high one, you're lifting everything a little higher. It is lower in the Civic. The Civic also has 60-40 split folding rear seats. And what that means is if you've got someone in the back seat, you can put one of the seats down, put longer items in. Now in the Elantra, like you said, the trunk space as far as leaders go is pretty much the same. The lift over is higher. It's not a deal breaker, but it is, you ha do have to lift over a little higher. And in this particular one, in this trim, the back seat is a single unit. It's not a 60-40 split like it is in the Civic. So if you want to put that seat down and put in longer cargo, you can't have anyone sitting in the rear seat. All right, let's get in the Civic now and drive that around and see how it goes. Let's do that.
So here we are in the Civic, and the first thing I notice is it is a sportier vehicle. It has better acceleration, it has a tighter steering feel, it's just not a sports car, but a sportier model than the, than the Hyundai is. And that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing, it's just different. Yeah, that was the funny thing when I noticed when I drove the Elantra first and then we switched and I got into the Civic and I felt like I was stepping into a different class of vehicle, which in a certain sense you are. Uh, compact cars these days have packed in a lot of technology and a lot of quality at the top end of the lineup. And the Civic lineup, it does start at a much higher almost $27,000 for a base Civic nowadays. Uh, and this one goes all the way up to $34,500 for the touring trim. And for that money, you get a lot of stuff. Uh, but it is still a lot of money for a Civic, which we're used to being an economy car. Exactly. The interior, as we mentioned, is nicer looking. There's some great stuff in here. We have the power seat. I love the uh, the vents. And it's, it's a silly thing, but this honeycomb that goes across the dash and then the little joysticks for the vents, just a, a little thing, but it makes the, the vehicle seem that much classier. Yeah. Yeah, it's also, it's like, you know, the top of the dash is soft touch plastics, that honeycomb pattern, plus some of the other plastics throughout the cabin, they're patterned to kind of make it seem a little bit nicer. So overall, it just lifts the whole experience, as does this engine. Like you mentioned, this is the top engine. It's a 1.5 liter turbo. It gets the 180 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. So you definitely feel it. How do you like driving it? I love driving it. It's not so sporty that it's twitchy. You, you never feel like it's intimidating you. It, it's not that it's constantly on the muscle. It's just a really nice experience for an everyday driver that, I mean, you can certainly move up to something in this size that has a lot more power and, and you know, premium. Well, both of these lineups, the Civic's got the Type R and there is the Elantra N, both of which are very sporty performance vehicles. They're both absolutely fantastic, but this, this is more of like a Goldilocks thing. It's at the top end of the trim. It's not basic, but it's got just enough sport to drive around nicely, but it's still comfortable. It's not a jarring ride, even though it's got the 18 inch wheels, which is a little bit bigger than the Elantra with the 17 inch wheels and the trim we're driving. Uh, so that balance is just really nicely well thought out uh, and really great for, for this class of vehicle. Exactly. This is a fun car to drive without, as you say, moving up to the, the Type R, which is a fabulous car to drive, but it's not an everyday driver, at least not the way this one is. Yeah, for some people that would be just a little bit too punishing. I do kind of wonder how the Civic would feel in the base trim and the basic two liter four cylinder engine that only makes 158 horsepower and 138 pound feet of torque. Uh, so it wouldn't be as powerful, but I imagine it would be similar to the Hyundai in that it's just smooth driving. It doesn't get up and go quite as quickly or have quite the same amount of highway passing power. But at the same time, it's kind of like, those are good numbers for this size of car. And I don't think that's gonna be a penalty box either. No, I don't think so. And one thing to note is, yeah, we're not doing them head to head, but we are at the mercy of what we can get to test. And so, yeah, I, I would have really liked to have put the Hyundai up against a lower trim of Civic, but this is all we could get. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, and in this really high trim, uh, it's also got some better features, right? We Jill mentioned the power seats, but it's also got like a little bit more tech in terms of the rear cross traffic alert, a slightly nicer backup camera and technology in the infotainment system. Uh, and I also like the fact that it's got a wireless charging pad for our phones, which is nice, which means you don't have to plug it in. And it's also got the wireless Apple CarPlay. That means you don't have to plug it in to get all the functions of your phone. One thing to note is that they both have embedded navigation, which a lot of people really like that. They don't have to depend on their phones for it, use the data for it. Uh, and at this, at this price point for, um, for having that kind of technology, you look at the Hyundai and you say, wow, I'm getting exactly the same thing for $8,500 less. 
Yeah, uh, and this one is operating it, uh, it's okay. Uh, however, it's almost all touch screen with the exception of a couple of buttons. At least it has a manual volume knob, uh, but you have to get used to finding some of the functions you like on the screen or through the home screen. Uh, and it's good. It's not quite as good as the Hyundai I find. There's something a little bit less intuitive of it, uh, and it takes a little bit more work to find some of the things you want to find. Yeah, it, it's not it's not difficult, but for example, if you want to bring up the uh, the the map on the Hyundai, you just there's a hard button for it. Uh, here it's an icon, not a big deal, but it's just a little more tactile. Yeah, if you like playing around with the technology, these some of these shortcuts are adjustable on the Civic, so that's kind of a nice perk, although the Hyundai's got a favorite button which you can adjust to one of your favorite things that might not be a button that's already set up. Yeah, another thing to note with the cruise control is the uh, it's adaptive on the Honda Civic, so it keeps its distance from vehicles in front. On the, uh, on the Elantra, it isn't. Yes, yeah, so, well, and that's the kind of feature that uh, 8500 should get you. One of the things I will say is that I have not been in an adaptive cruise as irritating as the Civics in quite some time. It is very sensitive in terms of when you're approaching traffic or changing lanes and you're close to the car in front of you that you're making the change. And I just found it just a little bit too overbearing. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't tailgate. <laughs> Although it, the, it does have a neat thing where it's like when you have the lane assist, uh, it actually shows you exactly how centered you are in your lane, as well as the car ahead of you, it shows how centered it is. It's really like accurate within the range that it has. One, one cool thing on it uh, is in the, uh, the instrument cluster, is it has a little picture of the car and it shows you when the brakes are on. And where that is, is I wouldn't say useful, but cool, is that if you are slowing down, if, if your adaptive cruise control is slowing you down, then you know that the lights are coming on as well. And so people behind you will realize that the vehicle is slowing. That is a neat little feature. What about looks? What do you, which, which do you prefer? Hands down the Civic. I am no fan of the Elantras in general. I find it's kind of both too pointy at the front and strangely bulbous at the back, whereas the Civic has got really nice proportions. I like the upright rear uh, trunk as well as the front end. Uh, so inside and outside, I much prefer the Civics for its looks. I like the way the Elantra looks. I, I like that uh, that sharp rear end and, and I do, I like the, the, the front end styling on it. That said, I think that the, the Civic has uh, more of a, a classic styling and I think it's going to look good longer. I think that, you know, 20 years from now, it's still going to look good. I think the Elantra might look a little dated, but that said, I still like the look of the Elantra right now. I, I, I think it's inter I think it's an interesting design. And of course, as, as anything else, taste is, is, is subjective. So now that we've driven them both, let's get out and see which one is going to win our comparison. All right, let's uh, hash it out. So we've driven these, we've talked about them, we've looked at their practicality. We've what looked at their think? pricing. We, uh, we've definitely looked at their pricing. So yeah, and this was think? this was a bit of a tough comparison because we were driving cars that were from such different parts of their pricing lineup. Like you mentioned, an eighty-five hundred dollar price gap in the vehicles as tested. But working our way through the lineups and the trims that they have, uh, and also just for what we're driving here today, for me, it's the Elantra. Right at this price point. So much value packed into that $26,000 uh, cost. And it's like, I'll take that hands down over what I get for that extra 8,500 in the Civic. Well, I'm looking at it as, as, yeah, they are in the same segment. They're not the same trim, obviously. I find them to be different vehicles when I'm driving them. As I mentioned, the Civic seems sportier. It's more powerful engine, obviously. The handling seems tighter and more responsive. The, uh, the Elantra, a little more laid back, more of a, a relaxing vehicle to drive. That doesn't make either one better. It makes them different. And so in terms of that, I love the way the Civic drives. I love the interior. I really like its features, but that 
that that whole value proposition i think for that because we are talking about a, a segment where money matters yeah. and for that i've got to give it to the elantra just because you get so much for that price yeah if i'm not ready to spend over forty thousand for the sports cars of the elantra n or the civic type r then i'm really looking a little bit higher in the elantra lineup for something like the n line which at thirty one thousand gives a more powerful engine and a lot of the same interior features uh granted I love the way the Civic looks inside and out, but I think just the value is impossible to escape in the Elantra lineup. So for me, that does it both in the lineup and the cars we're seeing here today. I agree with you. I like the Civic. I like the Elantra. I have to go on price and say, this is it. So there you have it. The Elantra wins this battle of compact cars. For Driving.ca, I'm Jonathan Yarconi. And I'm Jill McIntosh. And for more news, reviews, and comparisons, be sure to visit us on Driving.ca.